At Your Learning Zone, we believe good nutrition should start from an early age. It's the key foundation for children's health and development. We are passionate about helping you to serve nutritious food and to feel confident in advising parents about good nutrition for their children. Good nutrition isn't rocket science. The first principle of healthy eating is to enjoy your food, and as we know, that's true for children too. It's just a question of getting the balance right. Some foods can be eaten freely, while others need to be enjoyed as occasional treats. At Your Learning Zone, we believe there's no such thing as good and bad foods, just good and bad diets. So we know you are the experts in childcare. Today is about helping build on your nutritional knowledge. Your role in feeding the next generation cannot be underestimated. You can influence how a child eats for the rest of their lifetime. But don't worry, We're at Grub for Life can help make sense of the science of nutrition. There's lots of support and advice on the yourlearningzone.tv website, so check us out after you finish this session. In the meantime, sit back, relax, and enjoy the session. Today's session is about food allergy and intolerance management. We want to help you feel confident about the differences between food allergies, food intolerances, and common childhood food preferences. It's important that you're able to adapt your recipes and menus with nutritious alternative ingredients for children with allergies and intolerances. Many parents will look to you as the experts when it comes to their child's health and development. We want this session to help you feel really confident when you're talking to parents about their child's diet. So let's start by homing in on food allergies and intolerances. So food allergies in your setting. Take a minute to think about the children you care for. Do any of them need special diets? Perhaps you look after children with dairy allergies or lactose intolerance. And what about children who are just fussy eaters? Or perhaps you care for children who avoid beef or pork or other foods for religious or cultural reasons. If you don't prepare any special diets right now, remember that could easily change with the next child you enroll into your care. One of the most important things to help you manage food allergies and intolerances safely and effectively is to be able to separate them from normal everyday food preferences. When a child has a food allergy or intolerance, they can become very sick very quickly if a mistake is made. The situation can even result in a fatality. The fewer special diets you need to prepare, the less likely it is that a mistake can be made. It's that simple. Children with food preferences do not need to be placed on special diets. They need your childcare expertise to help encourage them through play and other food activities, to try new foods and enjoy them as part of a balanced diet. So let's take a look at an overview of food allergy and intolerance. An allergic reaction to a food is triggered by the immune system. The immune system treats the allergen, the food the child is allergic to, like a toxin. It triggers symptoms by producing chemicals in the blood which cause inflammation. And this happens very quickly. Symptoms can range from vomiting, skin rashes and hives, to the complete shutdown of the child's airways. In its most severe form, food allergies can result in anaphylactic shock, which is life-threatening if not treated urgently with an adrenaline auto-injector. Food allergies are less common than you might think, uh, affecting up to 8% of children. Some children go out of their food allergies, but this tends to be after the age of five. Food allergies are diagnosed by GPs or specialist allergy clinics. Now, there are other types of food intolerances that are quite different from food allergies. For instance, symptoms may be delayed, slow to appear. These types of reactions may or may not involve the immune system, such as celiac disease and often involve the digestive tract. So symptoms may include vomiting, diarrhea, bloating, abdominal pain, and in some children, skin conditions such as eczema and problems with the ears, nose, and throat. They can all be symptoms of food intolerance. 
Now there are lots of food intolerance tests available via the internet and from health stores. None of these are clinically valid, many give false positive results and they are not acceptable as proof of diagnosis in a childcare setting. The only reliable food intolerance diagnosis is following an exclusion diet where multiple foods are removed from the diet over a period of time and gradually reintroduced while any symptoms are carefully monitored. Exclusion diets should always be supervised by a dietitian and food intolerance must be supported by a diagnosis from a GP health visitor or dietitian. In a childcare setting, food allergies and intolerances must be managed in the same way, and that is by serving a diet which is completely free from the culprit food or any traces of that food. We'll talk about this later, but always remember the most important thing is to protect the child with a food allergy. The fewer variables there are, the greater the allergic child's protection. Remember, food allergy involves the immune system, Symptoms are triggered by reactions in the blood and develop very quickly. They can affect the skin and the airways as well as causing an upset tummy. Food allergy symptoms tend to get worse every time a child is exposed to the allergen. Eventually symptoms can become life-threatening when anaphylactic shock develops. Managing special diets is all about protecting the minority of children, 8%, who suffer from true food allergies. Now food preferences are very real. We all have some foods we really dislike. Some children will never learn to like specific foods like Brussels sprouts or couscous. However, many food preferences can be overcome and quickly left behind as the child grows and develops. Three quarters of children develop food preferences at some stage. It's a very normal part of development. Think about children who all of a sudden refuse to eat toast that's just a little bit too dark or won't eat a biscuit if it's broken. Many others have quite a limited range of vegetables they'll eat or struggle with foods that need a lot of chewing. Food preferences can often be linked back to late weaning and over-dependence on milk or through the influence of adults. No child should ever be forced to eat foods they really don't like, but they should be encouraged to at least try a food they say they don't want to eat. Food preferences can be overcome by using foods to play with or to do artwork with food. Children will often touch, smell and even taste a food if they're not in a formal eating situation. It doesn't usually work to hide foods, let children see the sprouts or the mushrooms on their plates. If they don't find them until they're in their mouth, it could make the problem worse. It takes time, but just like other challenging behaviour from children, most food refusal will eventually pass. So your principal aim is to protect children with food allergies. To do, to do this, you need to treat food allergies and intolerances in the same way. You need written diagnosis from a health professional and you must provide a menu which is 100% free from the culprit food. Special diets for food preferences should be avoided to minimize your risk of making a potentially fatal mistake. Food allergies and intolerance are medical conditions. Food preference are behavioural and developmental issues. Now 90% of food allergies are the eight ingredients listed on the left. You might well know someone who is allergic to shellfish, eggs or nuts. The second list includes common allergens throughout the EU. Ingredients like lupin and sulphites are food additives and mollusks are seafood living in shells like oysters and mussels. EU legislation states that all 14 allergen ingredients must always appear on food labels. In under fives, peanuts, milk, egg and wheat allergies are most common. Nuts are not usually served in childcare settings, so menus focus on adapting recipes for milk, egg and wheat. Other food allergies you experience will need the input from either us or the child base health visitor. Most children under five will grow out of a milk, egg or wheat allergy by the time they leave nursery, so this may be a temporary consideration. Food labels are the most reliable source of information if you know what you're looking for and where to find the right information. However, they can be very confusing to even a trained eye. So the first key take home message for today is always focus on the ingredients lists and treat any other information with caution. 
The ingredients list is the only ingredient information which is governed by law. Allergy advice panels making claims like free from wheat or information stating a food may contain certain ingredients like nuts are not legally binding. Information like this is purely voluntary and it's often included to protect the food manufacturer and not to inform you. So ignore it and stick to the ingredients list. It's the information you can trust. Legislation states that allergen ingredients are listed in a format that's easier to see. That can be on bold print or underlined or in a different style or colour of font. Now, for the first time, loose produce bought from delis, bakeries or over the counter uh, at supermarkets will have to declare if they contain any of the most common allergens. Sadly, the allergy advice panels and may contain warnings can still be on labels, but the advice remains the same. Ignore these and stick to the ingredients list as the trustworthy information on food labels. Remember, always stick to the ingredients list. Don't be put off if it looks like a chemistry lesson. Focus on the ingredients, which are highlighted in different font or type. So here are your golden rules when managing food allergies in a childcare setting. Be consistent. Dairy-free means 100% dairy-free. Not no milk, but can have cheese if it's cooked. This type of individuality is fine at home, but not in childcare. Individuality with special diets Increase the risk of mistakes, and mistakes can kill when it comes to food allergies. Always ask for a health professional's letter to support food allergy or intolerance diagnosis. You may have to agree a time limit of, say, one month for parents to obtain this, and during this time, of course, serve the free-from diet requested. You don't need to be nervous about food allergies and special diets. You have all the information you need to manage them and advise parents about your policies with confidence and start as you mean to go on at enrolment. It's so much easier to get it right from the start than to change things later. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, question time. Which of these are the most common Big 8 allergens? Yes, these are the most common food allergens and by law will always be highlighted in the ingredients list when present in a food. In under fives, peanut, milk, egg and wheat allergies are most common. What percentage of under fives have life-threatening allergies? Is it 6 to 8 percent, 26 to 28 percent, or 56 to 88 percent? That's right, only 6 to 8% of under fives have life threatening allergies. Food allergy is less common than many people think. Despite being relatively rare, it's food allergies which pose the greatest risk for a child carer. When it comes to food, your focus is always around protecting the child with a true food allergy. Allergens have to be highlighted in bold italics, underlined or coloured font on the ingredients list. Is this true or false?
It's true. Allergens have to be highlighted in bold, italics, underlined or coloured font on the ingredients list. Allergens also now have to be declared on loose food sold in delicatessens, bakeries and butcher shops and counters. The declaration may appear at the till or behind the counter and not on the label though. Allergen information appears on delicatessen, bakery or butchery products. True or false? And the answer is true. Allergens now have to be declared on loose food sold in delicatessens, bakeries and butcher shops and their counters. The declaration may appear at the till or behind the counter and not on the label though. May contain warnings like made on equipment that also processes other things, made in a factory that also processes other things. Are these compulsory by law? True or false? The answer is false. May contain warnings, remain voluntary and cannot be trusted as accurate information and advice on whether a food is safe to serve to a child with a food allergy or intolerance. When is the time to check whether a child has a food allergy? When they enroll? When they intend their first day? When they present signs? that they may be ill. And the answer is, of course, when they enrol, because enrolment is the critical time to identify the child with an allergy or intolerance and the children with common food allergies. It's not your job to diagnose, leave that to the health professionals, but it is your job to ask for the relevant information to support a diagnosis of a food allergy or intolerance. Doctor's letter is vital insurance for you and the children you care for. Asking for a doctor's letter shows you are a professional childcare expert. And it can also help parents to understand that they may be using the term food allergy when their child is simply going through a period of common food preferencing or fussy eating. Discussions around allergies and intolerances should, wherever possible, take place at enrolment. So start off as you mean to go on. So that's it. You can now separate food allergy and intolerance from common food preferences. You have all the tools to spot the allergens in food and food labels. Ensure that identification starts at the point of enrolment. Know that allergies are confirmed by a doctor and are relatively rare. You can talk with confidence to parents about food allergies and manage them effectively in your childcare setting. So well done for completing the training session. And don't forget, you can come back to your learning zone at any time for more advice and support. Our next session is dealing with milk, wheat and egg allergies in part two. Thank you for taking part.